people think of Toji, the first thing that comes to mind is his power. Most people would just talk about how cool it was to see him be Gojo and how if he was alive today, the rampage that he would run in the world. But there is a completely different side of Toji, the one that people don't really talk about, but I am glad Gege wrote into the story. And that is how Toji broke the fate of the Jujutsu world. There is a deep and greatly written backstory about Toji. And today I will be breaking down everything so you can see it with your own eyes. First, I want to say if you enjoy JJK content, then I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel as I upload about twice a week on different topics that you guys recommend me and a few of my own. Toji was born as a Zenin to the Zenin clan. Born with no cursed energy or a cursed technique, he was quickly outcast. As a child, he was beaten. He was thrown into a room of cursed spirits and was hurt so bad that he got a scar on his lip. It's the scar that we see today. We know the Zenin clan values cursed techniques more than anything. The fan book says that those who do not inherit a cursed technique are treated as an outcast, even if they are blood related. The Zenin clan treated Toji so badly they thought he would come get revenge on them one day. All of this abuse eventually led to Toji leaving the clan and becoming a sorcerer killer. As an adult, he met a woman by the name Fushiguro, and this woman helped calm his nerves a lot. Being with her made Toji have a turnaround and he was at the best point in his life. However, this would not last long, as Megami's mother would die shortly after giving birth to Megami. This would send Toji back into his old self as he began taking missions for money. He gained three special grade curse tools that we know of in the series as payment for these missions, and he gained the nickname Sorcerer Killer. Now before I get into how important his fight was with Gojo and Ghetto, I need to cover a few things. Curse energy has always been the endless cycle of pain and success in the Jujutsu society. Since the creation of the Big Three families, cursed techniques have been the power of the Jujutsu society's hierarchy, and the most powerful people would have a say. This goes back to the age of Sukuna. He was on a rampage 1000 years ago and was the most powerful person around during his time. Sukuna says that a hierarchy is meant to be based solely on strength, and that was the demise of Japan for a long time until recent years. Her spirits account for over 10,000 annual deaths in Japan, and Jujutsu sorcerers were then created to fight back against these cursed spirits. You see the problem here. Cursed energy is the problem and the solution. And this brings us back to Toji. Tengen explains Kenjaku's plan to optimize cursed energy because he believes the world needs to evolve. Ghetto had a similar ideology and that normal humans are weak and need to be eradicated. Ghetto believed that the world should only have sorcerers. Kenjaku's ideals are similar. He wants to create a nation of sorcerers through cursed energy. Nobody believed that a human could be strong without the use of cursed energy. And that is where Toji comes in. Tengen says that Toji broke the fate that was cursed on humans and that he freed Japan from their destinies. Toji simply existing was enough to shock everyone's mind. For over 1000 years, humans that were not sorcerers were deemed weak and were destined to die either from old age or cursed spirits that they could not fight off. Toji being as strong as he was put the Jujutsu society's ideologies on a full tilt as the view of needing cursed energy was no more. Toji was an anomaly. To get a full grip of how shocking this was, let me tell you how strong Toji was while he was alive. Gojo and Ghetto were known as the strongest duo back when they were in high school. Of all the sorcerers in Japan, those two were the strongest. They embodied what was meant to be the power behind cursed energy. Gojo and Ghetto were assigned a mission to protect and deliver the Star Plasma Vessel to Tengen, and once they completed it, their job was done. They successfully recovered the Star Plasma Vessel and made it back to the Jujutsu headquarters, but waiting there for them was Toji. He was able to move so fast while fighting Gojo that even Gojo was surprised, saying how is he moving so fast. Gojo also notes how hard it is to track Toji because he has no cursed energy. Toji's body being the way it is makes it extremely hard for sorcerers to fight him. This is because sorcerers normally sense their opponent's cursed energy in order to tell where they are. Because of Toji's extreme speed combined with his lack of cursed energy, Gojo finds it impossible to track him. Because of this, Gojo lets off a blue attack that clears out the surrounding area so he can get a better field of view. But once Toji summons insects to block Gojo's view, he runs up on him and stabs him in the throat with the inverted spear of heaven, ending the fight. Now we do see Toji go make light work of Ghetto, and most people don't think too much about this fight. But throughout the fight, you can really see the progression in Ghetto's eyes as he loses his sanity. This sanity that leads to the cursed energy ideals he forms later as an adult. The thing that messes up Toji the most is when he goes back to fight Gojo for a second time. 
Now I know what you were thinking. Toji had no choice but to fight Gojo. But the thing is, Toji did have a choice and he even says it himself. After being hit with purple, Toji says it himself. When talking about Gojo, he says, I wanted to discredit it, to crush it, the pinnacle of the Jujutsu world and the Zeni family. I wanted this for self-affirmation and I deviated from my true self. At that point, I had already lost. What Toji is saying here is that he did not need to take this fight. He could have run away, but instead he wanted to prove his strength, to prove himself. And at that point, he lost the fight. This is not the last time we see Toji though, because he fights later during the Shibuya incident after being resurrected. He's able to beat Dagon while he's inside his own domain. He outspeeds him and destroys him so quickly that it's hard to believe that Dagon was actually beating Nanami, Naobito, and Maki. Yes, Toji beat Dagon so badly that he looked like a baby in comparison. We also see Toji go to fight Megami in an alleyway, but after looking at Megami's eyes, he recognizes who he is. Toji says, what's your name? To which Megami replies, Fushiguro. And Toji replies, not Zenin, huh? Good for you. You see, even while resurrected and being a puppet of carnage, Toji still keeps feelings deep within himself. This is a surprise to some people and most think of Toji as a badass who kills sorcerers and doesn't care about anyone. But Toji honestly cares about people really deeply. He was stable while he was with Megami's mother, but after she passed away, he went back to his old self and lost hope. When describing Toji, Tengen says that he broke free from cursed energy, as if cursed energy itself was, you know, a curse. Even normal citizens are born with cursed energy, so they bear within themselves the curse. But Toji has zero cursed energy, so he is completely free of all the curses the Jujutsu world has to offer. He literally escaped the curse that runs rampant in Japan. One of the most interesting things about Toji is that he owns three of the most powerful curse tools we see in the series. He was the inverted spear of heaven. This tool negates curse techniques and was used to turn off Gojo's infinity so he could touch him. Another weapon he owns is the chain of a thousand miles. As long as he keeps the end of the chain hidden, the other end can extend as long as he wants. He also combines the inverted spear of heaven with the chain by putting the spear on the end. You see, Toji truly is a battle genius. The third weapon he owns is the split soul katana. There are two different translations for the abilities of the soul katana and I will show you both. Viz says that the soul katana can cut through many substances to hit the soul. The TCB translation says that the soul katana can cut through anything to hit the soul. Both translations have to do with hitting the soul, but the TCB translation makes the katana seem a bit stronger, as they say it can literally cut through anything. All three of these tools Toji has in his own possession. The way he gained these tools was by taking on missions from high bidders. We also see how Naoya views Toji is very important. When fighting Maki, Naoya says that the sin of the insignificant is the ignorance of strength and says that nobody could have understood Toji except for Gojo. I believe Naoya is talking about two different things here. One being only Gojo could understand Toji because Gojo was the only person around as strong as Toji was. I also believe Naoya was talking about the burden someone takes by being the strongest around. For Toji in specific, not only is he the strongest around, but he was an anomaly. He broke the mold for the belief that cursed energy is what constitutes strength, and he was still the strongest around. We also know Toji was the only one of his kind, not only in Japan, but the entire world. Yuki Tsukuma, who is a special grade sorcerer, said that she traveled the earth trying to find anyone born like Toji, and she said she couldn't do so. Before writing off Toji as a bad guy, you have to understand how depressing his life truly was. Being abused as a child and treated as an outcast from a young age, finding a woman who makes you feel comfortable and you can finally relax but then she dies years later, the burden of knowing you can't take care of your son so you give him to a man you don't even know instead of the clan that he was born to be in. All of these things really mess with a person's head. And instead of getting revenge on the Zenin clan, he left them alone and lived his life. I am not excusing any of Toji's actions, I am rather saying that you should look at how bad his life truly was before you judge him. The last thing I want to recover is how important it actually was that Toji simply existed. Her's energy is more than just attacks and defense. It was the way of life for the Jujutsu society for thousands of years. If you had no curse energy, you were a nobody. You were just a weakling that had little time left. But Toji came along and broke all of these ideas. Toji was the first of his kind to prove that the highest level of strength can be achieved without cursed energy. That people do not need to be bound by the curse that is cursed energy. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel as I'll be posting videos every few days on different JJK topics and if you have any criticisms for me let me know in the comments below. Thank you everyone.